Welcome to Lucy Moon's 2016 review in which I tell you all the things I liked in 2016 and maybe throw in a couple of predictions for things I will love in 2017. Yippee! Here we go! We're going to talk about all the things I loved. We're going to start with beauty. If you're not interested in beauty, skip through. The first thing I'm going to mention is something I actually went and lost, which is so annoying. I lost it just after Christmas, but I'm going to show a similar product. So it's the Kat Von D Lolita 2 Liquid Lipstick. I'm currently holding Nosferatu. Um, which is another shade in the range, but Lolita 2 specifically is one I used all year. It's like a burnt, rosy, reddy pink, and it just worked. Like, it just suited me really well, it lasted a long time, easy to reapply, didn't make your lips look like shriveled up shrimps, and it was amazing. I'm gonna have to repurchase in 2017. It is 2017. I have to repurchase. I didn't think of any food faves. Oh, there aren't really any food faves this year. I just ate what I normally ate. The next thing on my list took me by surprise. I think it will take most people by surprise, but it was honestly the best eyeshadow palette I've ever used, ever. Not because of the colors, but because of the, the quality of the product itself was unbelievable. Kylie Jenner's bronze palette. Yep, I'm as surprised as you are. <laughs> I bought it on a whim because there was free international shipping. Wait, let me get it open with one hand. I've got tea in one and the palette in the other. And the colours are nice, you know, like they're, they're good. They're not, um, they're very Kylie Jenner. Like they're not something I would normally go for necessarily. Like the bright orange in the middle and the kind of burnt red colours aren't really my jam. And the packaging, oh God. But the actual products are unbelievable. And for the price, I think it was $40 which is what, like 30-ish pounds. I couldn't recommend it enough. Next up, we have a fragrance and something I bought again on a whim, uh, would have been in Los Angeles actually, in anthropology, um, was this perfume. It's um, Stella by Tocca. Tocca is a cruelty-free perfume brand um, that I've loved for years, but I had no idea they were also cruelty-free. So that was like, woo, extra celebration. Anyway, this scent is incredibly floral. Um, I bought this tiny little bottle of it and I just um, went around everywhere I've been with it in my makeup bag and so if I'd forgotten a perfume I'd just kind of put a couple of droplets on my neck and on my wrists and it's lasted amazingly first of all and secondly it's a really strong nice smell. I It's very distinctive and very floral um, but if you're into floral scents it's really lovely. Now we move on to skincare and there is only one skincare product I have. The product I used throughout most of the year is the Liz L Cleanse and Polish Cleanser. Now this is great. This is just so versatile and so good. Um, I'm completely overexposed on this aren't I? This is one of the most versatile products I've ever used. You could use this on dry skin, oily skin, combination skin and I think it would work wonders. One of my 2017 goals, I wouldn't say it's a resolution because it's not set in stone, but I'd really like to try more skincare products and find a really good skincare routine for my face. As now I've come off my pill, uh, my skin is definitely oilier. It's so much oilier. Um, and I need to work out a way of working with it instead of working against it. Moving on to hair care, the conditioner I've used all year is American Cream by Lush. This stuff smells divine divine. <laughs> it's not the best at the actual conditioning but fortunately I've only needed a light conditioner for the past year and oh my god it just smells amazing. And then when it comes to styling I've been using the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray. My hair without anything in it hangs like a heavy pony's tail. I can't really explain it any other way it's just like heavy and floppy and silky and for some people that might be great but for me I desperately desire texture. So when I got my hair cut in, I think it was uh, September, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna get a bottle of this. And it has been a lifesaver. It's just amazing. There's a reason it's ridiculously expensive. Now, I think we can move on to fashion favorites. We're gonna start with these bad boys because they are so small and delicate. These little hooped earrings have been in my ears every, pretty much every day this year. I'd say 95% of the days of 2016, I was wearing these guys. I was given a Christmas present from H. Samuel that just really didn't suit me, and so I exchanged it for these tiny gold hoops. I think they're just gold-plated, and they actually really weren't very expensive. I think they're about 20 pounds, but they're amazing. They just sit in my ears all day, every day, 
I adore them. I absolutely adore them. Today I'm wearing proper hoops because I'm a real adult. Next we're going to talk about Marupa the Bear Scarf, as I call it affectionately. I don't actually know if it's got a name, but it's from Topshop and I bought it probably late 2015 and it has had a lot of wear. You know when a product smells like you because you've worn it so much? It smells of your scent and your perfume and your just bodily odour this scarf. In terms of clothing, a piece that I bought I think in early 2016 and just got so much, not necessarily so much wear out of, but I just adored them, are these trousers and I've just knocked them off the hanger. They're flared culottes, they're in this green like kind of uh, dulled uh, olive colour and they're this lovely, I don't even know what this material is, like a linen material? Uh, maybe like a cheaper linen. I don't know. And I got them on ASOS. They just flatter me so well. They are gorgeous. You can dress them up. You can wear them down. You can... I would wear them with the shoes I'm about to show you now. Or I'd wear them with little heels or with pumps or... You can even wear them with Doc Martens. They are so great and they are so flattering. I always got hit on more when I was wearing those trousers. I'm just saying. And finally, for fashion, we have these completely destroyed Adidas superstars. These bad boys have been exhausted completely this year and I really need to buy a new pair of trainers. Obviously, I still will wear these, but um, <laughs> they need a wash and they need a bit of a break. I think they need to go into retirement for a little while. A slightly random favorite is this Instax camera. I was given it for my birthday by my ex-boyfriend and I adore it. It has been the most nice, <laughs> the most nice way of keeping uh, physical memories. As you can see from my little Instax uh, display at the back of my bed. I especially like this design. I think this design's gorgeous. Now, let's move on to music. Well, this year I discovered Spotify and it revolutionized my listening experience. I spent the majority of my 2016 listening to three playlists that I made. They're called Earl Grey, Lavender, and Vanilla, and you can find them all on my Spotify. There's a link in the description. In general, I listen to a lot of dark R&B, a lot of contemporary hip hop. Those were the two genres that really stood out to me in 2016. Beyond that, however, there are a couple of projects that I absolutely loved and got played and played and played since their release this year. I'm only mentioning projects that were released in 2016, so hold your horses for other things. First of all, Lemonade. Obviously Lemonade. I think Lemonade really shook everyone up a bit. They were like, okay, this sets the tone for the rest of the year. What's gonna happen next? I just think the thing about Lemonade that made it so special was how much of an obvious collaborative effort it was. It was Beyonce in her prime with all of these other collaborators, incredibly talented musicians that collectively made a piece of art. And not forgetting the film that went with it because that was arguably the thing that made it incredibly unique. Then I think it's important to mention Chance's coloring book. That was amazing. I don't even know what to say about coloring book. It was just great. And when I was feeling particularly down in that period of time that it came out, it was just exactly what I needed. Obviously when the altar came out, I freaked out. I love Banks. I think we all know I love Banks. This was so much better than Goddess for me personally. I really felt like I was understood by this album. All of Black Bear's 2016 projects deserve a mention because that man produces music like no one else. It's just constant and, uh, what's the word? Evergreen. Black Bear makes evergreen music. We cannot forget uh, Black's project, Free Black, because that's all I played in November and December. That is it. I love it. I can't wait for more. It's also important to mention Dodi and Lauren's projects came out this year, which is so great. I love them. I love their music. I can't wait to see what they make next, even though Lauren has officially retired. Um, obviously she should be writing with other people. And an honorable mention should go to James Blake's I Need a Forest Fire because that song is unreal. <laughs> the YouTubers I've been loving this year are super predictable. It's Amy Lee from Vagabond Youth, The Lineup, uh, Megan Ellaby, all of these um, creators I've mentioned in previous favorites videos. So if you go and check out the old favorites videos, you'll find way more in-depth um, like channel and social account recommendations. 
Although a channel I don't think I've recommended is Negative Feedback, which is a film photography channel run by um, my friend George, and then he has guests on. I think Louis films a lot of it. Um, Aslan's on it occasionally. It's an amazing collaborative project, and I just adore the aesthetic of it. I love the way they talk about film. It's so accessible. And it's actually inspired me this year to pick up my film camera and take some real photos. If you like my channel, you will like negative feedback, even if you've never taken a film photograph in your life. Music and social account wise, next year, I'm gonna have a quick prediction. I think you should be looking out for the channel Benny, I'll link it down below, and the artist Tom Tripp. He's just released a song called Aurelia, I think, and it's great, and he's great, so check them out. Now we move on to real life stuff I've been loving this year. By real life stuff, I mean experiences. I know you're going to turn to me and be like, where were books? Where was television? Where was film? I didn't consume much of it last year. I spent the year graduating. Um, and then I spent the year trying to establish myself as a sole trader in this world. And so didn't consume enough media. That's a 2017 resolution. So I graduated. That is the defining achievement of this year. I managed to get a 2-1, an exact 65, passed my degree, I celebrated it. I am so happy. That was my one life goal ever. And now I have achieved it. And so there's this real sense of peace on whatever happens next at the moment. The next big goal is to buy a house. So I, I can chill for a little bit and just work my way towards that goal slowly. SOAS is an amazing university. The experience I had there was unparalleled to anything I probably will ever experience in my life. And that community of people was so unique. And I really did have some amazing experiences there. What else happened this year? Quite a lot happened this year. I think from there we need to move to YouTube and specifically we're gonna take a like pit stop at VidCon. VidCon was such an experience for me this year. It couldn't have been more different to my 2013 experience. I'd gone from the small YouTubers panel in 2013 to doing a Q&A with Hannah and Elena. And not only that, I got to moderate a panel as well, which was actually such a legit panel. Everyone on it, I just love so much. And that one was alternative comedy. And I know I'm not very funny. It's okay. It's cool. I'm alternative though. Ah. And on top of that, I got to make so many amazing friends. I got to chill out in LA for a week afterwards. I got to befriend more people, create close relationships with more people, just party with more people. Um, I cannot wait to go back. I'm assuming, fingers crossed I'll go, but I cannot wait. I'd also like to mention, even though both trips were a bit weird, I grew to really love Berlin this year and I actually keep thinking about going back. I think I should do other cities before I go back, but there's something about the energy in that city that is just amazing. I was also able this year to move back to London. So I moved out of London and back in all during one year. And I moved out under bad circumstances. I was unhappy, I was stressed. And I moved back feeling incredibly positive, incredibly ready to go and, and to live again in the city. And even now I'll be standing in the shower and just be like, whoa, and just be hit by this overwhelming, oh my God, I'm a graduate living in London now. This was the dream. I'm living my dream. And for that, I'm immensely grateful. And finally, we need to talk about YouTube. This has been an unbelievable year for me in terms of my online content, my social presence. I cannot believe how much it's exploded. I actually just looked it up and over the past year, I've gained over 135,000 subscribers. What? the hell. Again, I'm immensely grateful for it. I feel like one of the luckiest people on earth. And it became my job. I am a full-time YouTuber. Oh my god, words can't describe I'm doing a job I love in a city I love with people I love. Next year the aim is to push my creative boundaries. This year I feel like I've done a lot of vlogging. I've just tried to stay afloat whilst doing all of the other things I was having to do, such as graduating in my life. And now I have the freedom, the freedom of time and the freedom of ability and knowing, hopefully knowing the right people to be able to make some of the best content I've ever made. And I cannot wait to get started. Well, this is me starting, but this has been a bit vloggy, but still, I'm gonna do some great stuff, okay? Fingers crossed. And that is the end of Lucy Moon's 2016 review. 
Thank you so much for watching me for the past year and hopefully here's to many more years. I'm so grateful for your support and I hope you know that. And it honestly means the world to me because it enables me to create things I love. Thank you so, so, so much. Like 2016 has been the hardest year of my life, but without YouTube being my rock, I don't know where I'd be. So again, thank you so much. And here's to veg slash moon and I will see you tomorrow.